Welcome to the Sven Zone. I know you're asking yourself, what the heck is going on? This is not Sven. Well, actually, it is Sven. It's just a different Sven than what you're used to. More handsome version. <laughs> just doing a quick sound check, making sure everything's going to work here. Give me just a moment. So with us we have Micah. Hey. And we have Joe. Hey. <laughs> we have no sound. Give me a minute. Let me no see noise. Why this isn't as so it's working. Um Do I have my sound going to the right place? No. Okay. Aha! Now I can hear myself. <laughs> Alright, so again we have Joe. Hey! And Micah. What's up? Awesome. Cool. So, quick note for those of you who may not know much about my story of magic. I started playing back when magic had no symbols. All the cards were just black and white crayon and um, I've been mostly just playing with my family, with my friends um, and I have now close to what 4,000 you would say cards? Pretty close. Uh, Four to five thousand cards um, most of them are older. Uh, Micah has contributed significantly to my recent, and by recent, the last five or six years, um, because I've pretty much stopped buying cards for the most part. I'll buy a couple packs here and there, or a commander deck here and there. But uh, commander is my favorite style, or just making a deck and running with it. I guess it would now be considered historic. Um, Probably one of my favorite of all time decks is my rainbow deck, which has about 600 cards in it. None of them are, I think there's only three of them that are higher than four costs. Um, so they all play for one or two drops. Crap ton of lands, multicolored lands, really cool stuff. I rarely win, it's about 10% win rate, but when it does win, it's pretty cool. Um, but that's my background. So as you can tell, I don't have a whole lot of experience. I don't have a whole lot of knowledge, especially of the newer cards. Uh, I do a lot of Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest, and, which is a phone app, and a Magic the Gathering Arena. So, and I have that on the stream. You can check it out on YouTube if you want to see how I'm doing. I, I stream on both. I've started streaming Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest as well. So, check it out. If you're interested in these type of things, but the reason I brought these gentlemen here is because after a stimulus and a bonus check, I decided to screw paying off all of my bills and instead splurged and got a Strixhaven box of booster cards. So we're going to be opening those up. That's what we're here doing tonight, taking a look at the cards, talking about them, um, and that's why I have these two gentlemen here. So in less time than I just did, which is like 15 minutes. Explain a little bit about your, uh, let's start with Joe. Um, people have seen Micah before on the stream, uh, on my Sven Zone, D&D in the Sven Zone on Wednesday nights, if you want to check him out. Uh, we do D&D. &D. Um, so let's go with Joe uh, and tell us a little bit about who you are and why we want to listen to you and why we should listen to you when it comes to magic. Definitely shouldn't listen to me when it comes to magic. Um, I know I know a lot of knowledge about magic on as far as the individual cards, what's good, what's going to be good in the meta, what's going to be good in standard. Um, I typically play commander with friends and family, but standard is definitely my favorite format. I play almost exclusively on MTG Arena, and this is a great place to play standard. I don't have to worry about cataloging all my cards and keeping those in good condition. And I just hope that Wizards Coast doesn't go bankrupt, which I'm pretty sure is a pretty safe bet. 
All right, and Micah? Um, been playing Magic since shortly after high school. I pretty much play EDH only, Commander. I'm not really into the other ones. I'm not a big fan of Standard, especially because you have to buy new sets all the time. Um, but, I mean, EDH is the way to go. One copy of each card, just make sure it's not banned and you're good to go. You can play anything from really old beta stuff to stuff that came out last month, so I think it's the best version. But, of course, the other ones are fun too, so, yeah. All right, so for those of you who don't know, um, you may not even care, but Commander is you have one commander and it has to be a legendary card and um with i always used to say legendary creature but it doesn't actually have to be a legendary creature because now with Kaldheim itself there are flip cards that have a legendary cards that have both anyway um you have exactly 100 cards in your deck so you have a commander 99 other cards no card can be a duplicate of itself except for lands, um, and every card in the deck has to match your commander. Uh, other than that, you would, um, and then of course the life totals are a little different. You typically play with up to four players. Normally it's four players all at the same time playing together. Um, those of you who are familiar with Magic Gather Arena, Brawl is very similar to that. Um, but So when we talk tonight about EDH, um, the EDH stands for, once again, no idea. Do you remember what EDH stands for? No. <laughs> I just refer to it as Commander. I've always called it Commander EDH. All right, so... Uh, Let's find out. I'll there's, Google it. There's Commander. Um, when we talk about Commander, that's what we're talking about, uh, is is uh, the 100 card deck, and you can use any card that's ever made that hasn't been banned for Commander, obviously. Um, and then... So, let's go ahead and get rolling here. Uh, what I've done is I set up a little camera. We're going to play it by ear and see how this works. With the set, we got a foil of two sorceries. Um, I, as you know, one's an instant and one's a sorcery. Uh, let me get my camera on here. Do, 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 do. Oh, there, there it is, magic. So, let's see what I did there, magic. Um, so these are the foil versions of Path to Exile and Lightning Bolt. I also got three other copies that weren't foil. Um, and also, as you can see, what every commander dreams for is Soul Ring. Add, that's a one drop and add two to tap and add two to your card. So, let's go ahead and open up some packs and see what we get here. Um, go ahead and open them up. So this is what we got. We got these packs. Um, there's a crap ton of them. And we're gonna see, uh, the whole point is to Go ahead and open it. Um, see what we get here. See if we have any automatic awesome decks. See if we have anything that's worth any money. Um, I know none of these things, so that's why I have these <laughs> in here. Um, I have played with some of these cards on Magic Gathering Arena, as I said. So I'm familiar with some of them. So let's take a look here. Uh, oh, cool. So this is a different type of card I haven't seen before. It's called the Magic Gathering, and it says Art Series. Um, and like on the flip side, it's just a little... Called. Just what it says, it's a little flirt. Set um, boosters. Set boosters. So the set boosters come with the... Every pack comes with a special art card. Everyone will have a full art card from the series by the different artists who are in the series. Um, they're numbered on the back, so if you want to collect them, you can. They're not really worth anything. Um, I mean, you could usually pick them up at most magic shops for like a quarter a piece, but, um, and when you put them all together, they don't really make any fluid large picture, but they're individual uh, cards. So uh, like Swords to Plowshares has one in this one, and um, there's just a bunch of different cards that have actual graphic arts that are alternate arts or sometimes the same art from different arts of that set. So They can also make great proxies. Most of these, if not all of these cards, are going to be completely border-to-border -border art of cards that do exist yep. in this set. And if you're looking to collect these art cards for value, then if you if you get lucky, some of them have like a gold signature on them. And if it's a very popular artist um, that might leave the company or something, those of course are going to go up in value. But outside of that unicorn situation, like he said, they're not going to be with a whole lot. They make great proxies. Yeah, and they're pretty. They're good looking. Yeah. And explain to those who don't know what is a proxy. 
So uh, EDH, by the way, found the definition for it. It stands for uh, Elder Dragon Highlander. Elder Dragon because how cool and iconic the cards are. Highlander because you can only have one of each card in your deck. So it's the same thing as Commander. It's just what the nerds call it, apparently. Um, but a proxy card is a card that is a, a copy or printout or alternate art of a card that stands for something else. So, for example, if you have, I don't know, a Mana Crypt, and you don't want to put a really expensive card into a deck that you're going to shuffle and play with or lose or whatever, you can actually take a proxy art of that card as long as you own the actual copy of that card and you can play with that proxy for that card. What you want to do is make sure you have a proxy binder. If you're going to go to tournaments or if you're going to go to card shops and play, have a proxy binder so if anybody ever says, do you really own uh, Grim Tutor? Do you really own... Mana Drain. Mana Drain. Do you really own uh, anything that's really expensive? Mm -hmm. You can have a physical copy in your separate, protected, pristine deck case versus actually one that you play with constantly that you're going to rough up and tumble with. So, mm -hmm. For those of you who play Standard, as you know, some of your cards can cost quite a bit, and you've got four copies running in your deck, so you might not want to have some of those four copies getting damaged while you're running them. All right, so starting off with a lesson... Um, the lessons are pretty cool. They're, they can be played as their own, or you can, there are lots of cards that, that say learn. So it's a new mechanic that came out with Strixhaven, um, and it allows you to pull a lesson from outside your deck and play it. Um, and uh, put it in your hand, rather, and then, then you can play it later. Or you can have them in your deck and play them just like normal. Um, and then we have... This isn't going to work that way, so we'll try something else. All right, so um, go ahead and tell me the card. I'll throw it up there, and then if there's any, anything of interest, let me know. It's like this is Expel. It's a white uh, one drop with, uh, well, I mean, three drop total. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to stick one here. And if there's anything of note about that particular card, let me know. Otherwise, we're just going to drop the camera and fail at life. garbage. First pull. All right. So that's Expel. If it's, in, uh, it's, if it's of interest, let me know. Uh, we have Thrilling Discovery. It's a red, red and white drop. Let me fix my screen again. There we go. Alright, so this actually looks like a pretty decent card. You gain two life, then you can discard two cards. And if you do, you draw three more. So, um, both of these. So the way these, all these packs work is they are commons, and then they build up to your rare. You always have at least one rare in here. You have Tome Shredder, to red. Wolf, with haste. Illustrious historian. Anything to note about these cards so far? Not so far. Okay. We have excavated wall, which is a creature for one. It's a Random defender and allows you to uh, mill a card for for one and a tap. So it's pretty. It's, it has a lot of different things for a one, although and it's a zero four. So it's a pretty decent one one drop. So what's important about this next card is it's a Mystic Archive card, which is it's kind of been, it's been distinguished. It's kind of separate from the set a little bit. That being said, if you've seen this card, Demonic Tutor is super popular. It is one of the most expensive cards in the set, um, at least uh, at least in the American version. Uh, all of this set has Japanese versions also, which you won't see any of in this box. But um, that is one of the most expensive cards you can get. It's sixty dollars for that card right now. Uh, it is. There are several other arts of that card, but it's a pretty good two drop for uh, black. It's awesome. It's, yeah, you get to search your library for a card and put that card in your hand. Yeah, it's a tutor card for two, and it's a black staple. If you're playing any kind of black deck and you have the tutors, you're going to want that one. Yeah, Same if thing. you're familiar with black, you're, from, you're usually going to be familiar with Demonic Tuner. Yeah. I don't know how often they print it. It's but really I've old. Seen it for it's really old, and they've reprinted it a couple of times, so. Deadly Brew. So this is unco uncommon. Uh, 
two drop. Lots of multicolor stuff in this deck too. Not a ton of creatures. This uh, this set was really spell heavy. Um, Strixhaven is basically I don't know how familiar people are with the set or not, but they're different schools of magic in Strixhaven, and each school of magic has a dragon that represents it for the school, and they're all two colors. So they're think of it kind of like Harry Potter, but not Harry Potter. They all have houses, and each house has its own dragon that represents that house. Um, and they took a lot of the planeswalkers and turned them into professors. So, for example, uh, there's a professor in this called Onyx, and she's actually Liliana. And it says it on the card that Onyx is Liliana. But each of the professors represents the house is kind of like Harry Potter style. So this is, um, a, I don't even know what the official name for it is. Uh, it's got dual sides. So and if you look on the bottom, it shows you what the other side is. So this is a red and a blue card as well, uh, depending on what side you play. That's also an uncommon. Yeah. And that brings us to our rare, right? Or we're still uncommon. Oh, actually, this is our mythic. We've got a mythic Bilzani Pris Pris the hell? Prismari. <laughs> So this is going to be one of the one of the elder dragons in this set. Each of these elder dragons is based on the school that created them. So as you can see, he's got Prismari in his name, while the red and blue school in this set is is called the Prismari, Prismari House Prismari. or Prismari School. So basically, this gives you treasure tokens, and when you you also changes your treasure token to instead of uh, some. Let's just do this anyway. Oh, all of your artifacts, instead of uh, so a treasure, treasure cards are, are artifacts that you you uh, destroy to gain a mana. This allows all of your artifacts to simply tap. So if you have treasure cards, you can tap them, gain mana, and keep using them over and over. Yeah. It's basically, like having lands. All your artifacts are now lands. The two rares from that deck. Here's that a, the rare for this one is Culling Ritual. So Culling Ritual is going to be a pretty good staple for anyone playing Standard. It's, a, it's out of 4-drop, but Standard is littered with 2 and under creatures right now. So you're probably going to see a lot of this in those colors being and, used against you. And do you know that Strixhaven is heavy with tokens? You can make Inklings and uh, Spirits and... Elementals. Um, pests. Yep. And uh, like he said, Elementals. So here's another double-sided card. The black and green. Valentine is a really good card. Um, I don't even know what his back does, but he's Menace Lifelink. He's a one drop. One one. Menace and Lifelink. And then uh, his text reads that um, if a non-token creature and opponent controls die to exile it instead, you pay two and create a cult by a pest. Um, when the pest dies, the one one creature you gain alive. So this thing for one drop is pretty insane. Um, the vampire as well, so if you're running a vampire deck. Wizard, so if you're running a party deck or um, a wizard deck. And then the other side is <coughs> your uh, legendary creature, human druid. <laughs> Lee set Dean of the Roost. Of the root. Yeah. Dean, once again, with that school theme. All right, next. So we have another rare, Callous Blood Mage. He's a vampire warlock. Let's see if I can uh, tempt fate and try to get this to uh, focus a little bit better. So these, um, this Vampire Warlock is a three. Again, he's a rare. A couple different choices. You choose one. There's three different things you can do. Neat looking. All right, we have another rare Radiant Skull Scroll Wielder. It's a dwarf. 
and a cleric. Again, if you're looking for uh, party decks, instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. So uh, I have seen this one before. It's a four drop, three four, but it's also a creature. So um, you've got some really cool stuff. That's from Double Masters, isn't it? Yeah. Being able to take, being able Look to have your quick. instants yeah. and sorcery spells all have lifelink. So if, um, also Magecraft is huge in this. So where you can duplicate your stuff, uh, duplicate targets, duplicate your spells every time. There's lots of creatures that do that. And so throw this, throwing this guy down, doing a, a, a simple thing like um, spark, no shock, that does two damage. Yeah. Doubling it, and now you've, you've done four points of damage, two, different, two, two points of damage, two different creatures, gained four life just by having this guy on the field. And he can attack for two, so good card, <laughs> good card. That card is awesome. So uh, so also in these sets, uh, what set is this? What type of box is it? A set booster. So it's a set booster box. So they all come with the full art cards. Um, you have more probability of getting these two. So this isn't even in this set. This is from Time Spiral. That's Kozilek Butcher of Truth. Uh, he's currently uh, anywhere from... 60 to 80 bucks, depending on where you're getting them from. And that's not even in this set. He's still in the pack, though. So sometimes you'll pull, instead of getting a token or an advertisement card in these booster packs, you'll get a card from a different set. Um, sometimes they're trash, sometimes they're this. So he's, in the price that he's paid for the box, he's already made two quarters of it back in two cards. His demonic, his, di his, diabol his demonic tutor and his Kozilek alone are going to be good to go. Get you back and to this value. This is uh, Eldrazi. Yeah. So um, Eldrazi are usually high cost, but they do crazy things. Like this one is an Annihilator 4. Yeah. So you're looking at every time he attacks, the, your, your opponent has to discard four of the cards that Worse. are on the, on the field. Yeah, you have to sacrifice four permanents before you can choose your blockers. Yep. So, so uh, every it's, time. It's, it's crazy. Um, and, and he draws four cards. He costs eight, I believe it is. Eight? No, it's ten. It's oh, ten it's drop. Expensive. But uh, you draw four cards as well whenever you throw him down. Um, and then when you put to a graveyard, you then shuffle your graveyard back into your library. So this is an insane card again. Absolutely. It's not going to be usable in standard, I don't believe. Nope, no. but you can run it in commander or EDH. Alright, and so the other thing they did is, what are these called, the type of, of the drawing, drawing? They're called Mystic Archive. Mystic Archive yes. cards. They're, re they're redrawings of cards that already existed. Um, so here we have a, a croissant. Mystic Rip. Archive is also not going to be usable in standard, unfortunately. Yeah, you'll be able to use it in standard. Crochet Grip is a pretty common green card for EDH. So even though the, these came out right now, you can't use this right now as in nope. standard deck? No, because that's a really old card. It's not from this set. So Crochet Grip came oh, out years and years and years so ago. So the, the scroll card, the scroll symbol, is not part of only, The only one in Strixhaven is the, the bird. Correct. Yeah, it's just the phoenix-looking bird is the one. Okay. Um, so yeah, so here we have some possibilities. Um, hey, Angel. Defiant Strike. Okay. I've used a lot of these in Magic the Gathering because the art's cool. Uh, I didn't realize that it wasn't standard. Negate. Duress is is part of standard right now, so it negate. But that's just because it's they part of the older a bunch. decks as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You'll see a lot of things that are not in there like Dark Ritual and Swords of Plowshares. All that, that kind of stuff. And then we have a foil mythic art. Tezzeret Gambit. Um, and there's a here's he's a foil sorcery. So we got a lot of these um, cool mythic art cards. So for those of you watching, I made a, a, a terrible life choice, and because I didn't care for the deck hey. for the placement, I flipped it upside down. But that means that the sticky side is up, so I can Rubber. barely move these cards as I'm throwing them to you. you know, what I'm doing right now is I'm separating your your rares out and your mystic archives. So here's double sided. Um, oh, that's cool. Uncle Misto. Uh, there's a black. Uh, it's a white, uh, selfless, 
Glyph Weaver, Human Cleric. Do either of you run a party deck, by the way? I know I've mentioned it several times. I do not. I don't run a party deck. Uh, I have two party decks in my um, puzzle. Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. Uh, initially, I never really cared for them at all because the whole concept is to have a, cl a cleric, a thief, a warrior, and a wizard. And that's your full party if you have one of each. But if you have three clerics, it still only counts as one cleric in your party. So, um, I was like, how plausible is it that you're going to be able to get all four of these things out, etc., etc.? Et but there are <gasps> artifacts, there are sports, <laughs> there are uh, enchantments, all these things that count as a member of your party. There's, is that insane? There's mm -hmm. an animal, for example, so. that pack beast that counts. Oh, look at the price of that. And it can be it. any one of the four. So it's pretty cool. This card I've seen as well, uh, Harness Infinity. It's a three black, three green, and and a one drop. And you exchange your yeah, hand the and the graveyard. Sitting right there. So by the time you're able to cast a seven drop, I just saw the second go. You're gonna have a crap ton of things in your in your Maybe graveyard, sure which is why this is a mythic. I'm gonna hand those to him. So, you can show what we're talking so about. and especially if you're doing a mill deck, you're milling half your your um, deck into your hand, into your graveyard. Now, your entire graveyard becomes your hand. So, are you guys familiar with this card? What do you guys think of it? I mean, it's good for mill decks if you're going to run them. It's not a card I typically run, but it's not a bad card at all. So here, I like these a lot, the ones that have the dual land cost. So this is black or green for four, but any combination thereof, so it makes it really nice. Yeah. Um, we have Attempted by Orc. So again, this is for commanders because it says for each opponent. You yeah. gain control of up to one target creature that player controls. Now I would have to read the dynamics of this. So it says gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker <laughs> that player controls with mana value three or less. Yeah. So um, for each opponent, so if Joe had three creatures, I couldn't grab all three. I had I no. would have to do one for each person, correct? Yeah, so you would get one of Joe's, one of mine, one of whoever your other opponent was, and it has to be three or less for that creature. Yep. Okay. And then we've got uh, Magma Opus is also another famous one. Hey, girl. You just said hi. I need a lanyard. I have many of them. I'm going to give you one mm -hmm. in a minute. Okay. Um, so Magma Opus is six cost. And then a blue and a uh, red. It does six, uh, four damage divided any way you want. But then you also tap two target permanents. You create a four blue. Uh, 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 you create a four four blue and red elemental token, and you draw two cards. So it's a crazy card. Costs a lot, but it's crazy if you can get up to it. It's just and afford it. What do you guys think of this one? This mythic. Magma Opus. I don't run those colors often. Um, blue, red, Prismari is not really my set standard. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't have too much comments on that one. Because I don't, I don't run blue, red. If it's green, if it's black, that's where I'm at. <laughs> All right. Well, here you are. We have Verdant Mastery. Um, instead of paying this five and one, it costs three and one. Sure. Um, and then you search the library for up to four cards, land cards, and reveal yeah. them. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped. Yep. Or if you pay the full cost for it, you put two of them onto the battlefield tapped, and then rest in your hand. So it's pretty good. Um, it's a great way to cheat out land. It is really expensive for green. Um, there's way better ways to cheat out land with green. You got Kadama's Reach, Growth Spiral. Um, there's just a ton of other ways to do it. Um, green also ramps a bunch, so you don't necessarily have to worry about cheating land out as long as you get a bunch of little mana tappers, but it's not a bad one. It gives you uh, the ability to play land if you're sh hurting to get land or if you need to shuffle your deck. That's always a great way to go, too. So I've also noticed that a lot of these type of lands are called Dual snarls, lands. and 
The, the cool thing about snarls is, uh, and again, this is a mechanic I haven't seen before in this iteration, where this is a plains or mountains. It comes in tapped unless you have a plains or a mountains. So a lot of times they have the, the other ones will be like the castle lock um, will, will come in unless you have a, a swamp. Yeah. But this one allows you to do the dual mount mana for if you have one of either one. So it's nice. Yeah. Here's another lesson. The sorcery. Red sorcery lesson. Lessons what do you guys are, think of lessons? So I like lessons a lot. Um, they count as part of your sideboard or your side deck. I don't know if it's technically sideboard or side deck. Um, so they count towards that number. Um, I think you can have seven is the official number of how many you can have at most. I think Arena is going at eight, and then shops are handling it differently. Okay. So check with your shop, or if you're playing Arena, I think Arena seven or eight. Um, but they're great because you don't have to have them in your deck. Um, a lot of people will put them in their deck. If you're going to be competitive, I wouldn't recommend it. In all honesty, just get something that lets you learn that lesson box, and play that in instead. Out. And just keep that deck with better cards that will fill its spot. Okay. Yeah, le lessons are more or less not worth their cost. Uh, they're typically going to be over, over, over. They're going to be too expensive for the effect you get out of them. But having them not take up room in your deck is fantastic, which kind of helps make up for that a high cost because it allows you to kind of tailor your. If you've got eight different lessons in your sideboard that on arena, then you can pick the lesson that you need for that scenario. So the extra cost is, ends up being worth it if you're using it to learn. Um, this one gives you all creatures at double strike. I like that a lot. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the uh, ch charging Galareth or whatever it is. It's a white drop at seven. This guy is a four for either red or or white. Um, here we go. Teach by example. So, like I said, there's a lot of them here where it allows you to duplicate your your instant sor and sorceries. You'll see that a lot in Strixhaven. Yep. So this um, is an example of those full arts, signed and non-signed. Here we go. Uh, and do you remember what this is called? Oh, Inquisitor of Inquisition of Kozilek. It means the Butcher of Truth, the really expensive one you had earlier. There's different Kozileks, but that's what they're referencing. That's the Eldrazi they're talking about. And that's the regular one there. And then next to it, if you're lucky, you can get the signed one. You can tell it's signed because it's got the shiny gold on the bottom of it. Um, they're etched in. It's not actual signature, but they're they're signed by the artist who drew the graphic art for it. Mm -hmm. Did you give them the one that had the... I got those right here. Okay, perfect. And then speaking of making great Sorry. proxies... Um, if you look through here, there should be a lanyard to it. So what I've got here is called Silver Quote Command. He'll put it up on the screen here in a minute. These command cards are relatively good, um, especially the ones that are at instant speed. I don't think we've pulled a Prismari command yet, but you're going to start seeing a lot of Prismari command showing up in standard. Just really good, really cheap, and it's an instant speed. This is an example of those full art proxies I was talking about where you've got you got your Silver Quill Command, and then you've got the Full Art card that kind of goes with it. So if you don't want to use Silver Quill Command, or if you just like Full Art cards, you know, if you own this card and you own the art for it, you can just sleeve this art for it. Now you've got this beautiful Full Art card. Yeah, edge to edge, not a single bit of non-colored art there. Yeah, no text getting in the way of your junk. And your Silver Quill does allow you to do two things. Um, Target creatures plus three plus three in flying or return a creature card of mana to the graveyard from the from your battlefield. I mean from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, player draws a card, loses life, opponent sacrifices a creature. So um, it's a decent card. It's a four drop. Here's a full art of that Prismari dr elder dragon he pulled earlier. Yeah, that's the the official dragon for that house, the Prismari house. That to fear his protection. We haven't gone through the Mythic Archive yet. Okay, well, are, the, are we waiting for those? I mean, I'm setting them aside, so we'll go through them at a bit different time. Cool. So we have a uh, Rushed Rebirth. It's a rare two drop. Uh, we have Plarg. Here again, it's a double sided Dean of Chaos. 
or the Dean of Order, white or red, um, human, cleric, or orc, shaman. I'm not real familiar with shamans. I mean... Just another class, uh, a subclass. I haven't heard of a lot of them, are there? There's a lot of shamans, but they're, of course, okay. across everything. So there's orc shamans, elf shamans. Yep. Um, I and mean, the shaman's been around for quite a while, too. Okay. There's just another subclass. Another... I've seen them most often with goblins and EDH decks. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, here's a human shaman. So um, I have at least two, so I'll, I'll look around and give it to you. Do you need them right this second? You can wait till tomorrow. No, I have to put my new keys on them. Okay. Um, even I have a keychain right now. I know where that is. All right, so this one is the uh, Poet's Quill. When it enters the battlefield, you learn. So again, we're talking about learn. And a quiff creature has lifelink. Um, so this is a cool mechanic. I have, don't really see a whole lot. It's an artifact. It um, allows you to learn, and then it also buffs your creature as well. Um, has life, which gives your creature plus one and lifelink, so it's pretty nice. Decent card, I wouldn't mind playing that. I have to keep that in mind. The black as well, so black doesn't give you a whole lot of 1 1 type things. You have no. a Gnarled Professor, Gnarled Professor Treefolk Druid. Seen him before? Yep. There's. Can you put that back in the living room? No, because I'm going to see if they want this stuff from here. Um, Alright, sorry guys, we were right there. One second. Put a keychain. Put it on that. That's oh, a better version of the other card you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Doing that instead of that kind of crap. Mm hmm. Planeswalkers, Rowan, and this is a double-sided Rowan or Will. Um, I personally don't like it with double-sided Planeswalkers. Do you guys ever run them? Uh, some of them, but not any. Not from this set. I didn't run a ton of them. Um, some of the older ones, yeah, but not from this set. Um, they did give you marker cards with these ones, which are all of those blank ones. If you get blank cards, that's what those are for. You write what the card is on there, so that way, when you're playing, you can show people what it is and. You can have it in your hand, people won't know what it is, so just if you ever get those in your packs, that's what they're for. Well, I don't know if anybody who runs without sleeves anyway. Yeah. So they're sleeved. Um, yep. So we have the Spirit Cleric. Again, there's a lot of these uh, spirits. Is a huge, like huge awesome. in Strix Haven. I haven't talked about that. So there's another rare. I love that card. Uh, Probably my favorite card from the Vigilance cool. and Trample. Does a bunch of other stuff too. Your another snarl. Remember, we were talking about the snarls. Here's your uh, your green and black. If you want, if you're running green, I mean, uh, green or blue. If you're running green and blue, definitely want that snarl. So now we have a really cool Shadrix Quiver uh, Silver Quill. Um, this is the one I don't care for. I don't think I'll ever use him. I pulled him in Magic Gathering Arena, so I had this Elder Dragon. And you would think, ooh, a mythic elder dragon. How cool is that? He's got to be awesome. Plus, he costs freaking five. The three drop, white and black. Yeah. But I don't care for him at all because... So, he's only a 2-5 to begin with. Um, and for an elder dragon, you would think he would do more than just two damage. He does have flying and double strike. But at the beginning of combat, on your turn... You, you may choose two, and each one must target a different player. So my, so I do have a question for the experts here. Sure. Can you only choose one? Yeah, because you, you may choose two, but you don't have to choose two. Okay, so that, that, that makes him better, because I thought you always had to do two. No. Um, and since you can't do them both to yourself, and they're all good, then I didn't really care for him at all. So maybe I'll give him a second look. Um, but he does things like tap... Uh, uh, creates a token. He 
makes you draw a card and lose a life, uh, or you put plus one, plus one counters on all creatures you control. It's the good stuff, but you wouldn't want to do it to your players, your opponent. So, so a really popular standard, like there's different ways to play the game, obviously, but there's new, it's not new, but it's a form called like group hug. And basically you build your deck to help everybody out. You give everybody one plus ones. You give everybody a life here or there. You give some people protection. You do counters. Stuff to just kind of give everybody on the field a little bit of an advantage in hopes that they won't attack you. That they'll keep you around long enough for you to build up to something that will then just wipe out the playing field. That's what that card's built around. Um, he's just there to kind of just seem like he's being a nice guy as he leads you down a cliff of doom. So... Hopefully you don't mess with him long enough to sneak something really good out onto the field or lead to something extra good. So here's the Strixhaven Stadium. There's another artifact. Again, a new, uh, there's quite a few artifacts in Strixhaven as well. Um, some of the other um, uh, releases were very artifact light. This one is not quite as artifact light as the other ones are. The stadium allows you to do... Um, when combat damage is done to you, you can put a counter on it, and then when it's damage is done, uh, when, you, when you do damage, you put a counter on it. When damage is done to you, you take it away, and basically you can, uh, if it ever gets 10 or more on it, you can remove them all, and they lose the game. So, uh, it's a little interesting live play. I don't know how much... Live play will be, but Magic Alley Arena will be really easy to play. So. Well, and especially if you're playing things like Commander, once again, it's really where I'm at. Uh, you play things like Doubling Season. Um, if you have, um, what is it, Primal Vigor? Is that the one that doubles all your the counters? Vor vor the, the six drop. There's a Vorinclex. Vorinclex. Vorinclex yep. does that. It'll double your counters real quick. So it's really not that hard to get it up to 10 at all. So it's a double-sided artifact and sorcery. So again, it's a weird mix, uh, but I like it. I like weird cards like that. It's a win condition, so you can get it out there. You can potentially win with it, which is nice. Here's a four. Again, I like the double lands to pay the double cost, white and black. Yeah, it helps you to fix it. Plus one, plus one, but it's nice. It's an enchantment. Uh, enchantments are a little hard to get rid of sometimes. Uh, whenever so it's a, it's a nice, decent card. Uh, it's a good rare card. Here's another Dragon card, Dragon Guard Elite. We were talking about Magecraft. So there you go. You have, she, could, she only costs two, but every time you cast a spell, you can duplicate it. And then you put a plus one, plus one counter on it too. Yeah, copy it out. Uh, Magecraft doesn't always duplicate. Yeah, Magecraft does different things depending on the card, but a lot of them are gonna copy instants or sorceries. Um, just depends on what you're doing. And it'll tell you under the Magecraft what it does, which is nice. Especially if you're newer to Magic or if you're new to a set. Like, I'm not real familiar with the set yet. Um, it'll tell you what it does, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so here's an instant to five drop, though. But well, with um, this Bograph, real quick, put Bograph back on the table. Okay. So I put Bograph, so we, we've been trying to stick to just the, just the rares or the things people are going to be interested in, the higher value, the rare cards. Bograph is only a common. I put it in here because... If you're going to see it in standard, it's an amazing common card for its cost. It makes you sacrifice a creature to, bec to become even cheaper when it comes out. With so many tokens in this field, especially with this one having mascots being a priority, yeah. um, being able to sacrifice a creature you have on the field is going to be very easy for you to do. You can cheat Plus, it out. something that's uh, not a lot of them, there are not a lot of dogs. So this is a dog and it's a plant. Again, not a lot of plants, so again, if you're trying to fill that niche of a dog or a plant, uh, there are some cards out there that boost all your dogs, all your yep. cats. Ren and Siri. Um, there's a animal sanctuary that gives you a boost if you're running a cat, dog, bird, so things like that. Um, it's a cool card, and it's uh, common, so. Yeah. Lord Hold Command, again, is a five drops, an instant, though. And then you get to choose two of all of a lot of these different things. It's got a loxodon on the picture, or an elephant person. <laughs> you have another, we have another uh, lesson. 
where this one, uh, most of the lessons allow you to do multiple things. Not all of them, there are some that just summon uh, tokens and things, but uh, here's another lesson, sorcery. It's only a two drop though, so it's nice. That's one of the cheaper ones, and it gives you the whole thought. You have a conspiracy theorist for rare human shaman. Here we go, talking about shamans again. Yep, human shaman. So he'll tick both of those boxes. We have an accomplished alchemist, which allows you to tap for one of any color. Um, where this X is the amount of life you gain this turn, or just a regular tap. Uh, and he's only a four well, drop. He's a four drop, though. Yeah, so it's a um, four drop green, which is pretty great. It's an elf, so if you're running five. an elf, yeah, if you're running an elf theme deck, that'll go in there nicely. Uh, four is not super expensive if you're running an elf. I mean, it's pretty expensive, but it really gives you that, and you get to gain tap for how much life you gained, which is pretty common right now. So, so you've seen Verdant Mastery. This is just a foil copy of it. The shiny, Ooh. shiny version. Ooh. Uh, As they say, I'm actually just like other cards, just a little shinier and a little bit rarer. All right, and this is a double minor. Again, going with the, the school theme. Yep. Copying the, the target spells. We've been talking about that. So here are the inklings, here are the pests. Oh, fractals is the other one I forgot. Yeah. yeah. So you've got these are going to be the mascots of each school. Um, so the inkling is just flying. It's a but it is a two two one. So it's a little bit more attack. Uh, your fractals are zero zeros, but usually they're uh, come in with bonuses. Oh, well, they always come in with bonuses, or they don't come in. But um, fractals are the. Um, they are, yeah, so they're just that, but they usually have other, other bonuses as well. Not familiar with the fractals as much. Elementals are almost always blue and green, I mean blue and red. Uh, these are four fours, so they're more hefty than the other. There are lots of spells and creatures that create those. And you have your spirits. Uh, spirits are very common besides normal spirit cards that are now uh, a lot of them in this theme and theme. Um, this release. These are 3-2 token spirits. And then you have your pests. When they die, you gain a life. Yeah, good old green. So, like the Eldrazi spawn, where you usually gain treasures, or when you usually gain a mana, or Get the mana treasure cards, you usually gain ma mana, or the uh, food tokens, where you gain life. These are all the, the newest iteration of those. All right, so now we seem to are. I have water and soda and stuff if you guys are dying. Oh, no, I'm okay. Um, and I have some there. They're cold as well. All right, so we have a legendary F. Again, it could be a commander. The nice thing about this is it flips, so you could have... Kane, I mean, uh, Kyan, the D, as your commander, but then you can also cast the, the flip side of it. Um, he's also a legendary creature, but... Yep. Um, prismatic Bridge is, is what I'm thinking of, where the Prismatic Bridge aspect of it is an enchantment, but the actual le the commander is an elf, and I don't even know what the elf does, cause I never use it. I always use a Prismatic Bridge. With, yep. I have that as a blaze... As a, uh, so the elf can the elf can um, be an amazing card. She let she lets your legendary cards tap for mana. Yeah, legendary creatures. Um, the enchantment costs one of every color, but it allows you to every turn play the next creature card in your deck, um, and it is amazing. Uh, so I have a uh, my mind to a blank, but the, uh, is the that from Brawl Kaldheim? deck. Yeah, yeah, it's a Kaldheim set. I had the Brawl deck with her in it with just massive creatures insane cost creatures uh, and then mana ramps and that's all it is <laughs> I don't think I have any instants or sorceries in the whole thing um, and it it's about 35 to 40 percent win chance but when it, when it goes plays off. out it's nice it's really nice it takes a lot of luck but it's good all right so here's another rare no this is an uncommon 
human warlock. Again, warlocks I uh, haven't seen a lot of before. But then again, I'm not real familiar with our warlocks, part of older. Warlocks are typically older. There's not a ton of them. Is somebody looking in the door? Just keep opening a tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. Right there. <laughs> All right, Fervent Mastery is a rare for five. Again, you can pay four instead of five <laughs> for a lesser effect. And then we have Semester's End, um, Wall of Text. It's the only number of creatures and planes of RPGs you control them. At the end step, you return each of them to the battlefield. Um, and they get a plus one, plus one counter on it. Or loyalty if they're a planeswalker. So this is an instant as well, and the only and it costs four. So this is awesome for commander. Yep. I don't know how good it would be in normal standard, but commander is awesome because commander is full of board wipes. Lots of them. And so someone plays a board wipe, everybody else is panicking, freaking out. You just calmly play this, clear off your board. Wait till everybody else dies. At the end of the turn, they come back in. Not only do they come back in, like the phase, there's a phase card that does that, where they just phase out until the end of the turn, or the start of your next turn, rather. Yep. But this one gives them plus one, plus ones, and um, or loyalty. All right. And the last one was uh, an Afrit Shaman. Again, Afrit I'm not real familiar with. Don't know how many there are besides the ones that are in this one. Is this, do you know if a freak are new to uh, Strixhaven? I don't know. No, I don't believe so. It's red. It's a rare. It's only a 1-4 for red, but it does have double strike. Yeah. Um, and when it does damage to a player, you can target an instant of sorcery cast from your graveyard without paying its cost. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. That'll be great. You can double up on stuff. And it's a 4-drop. Um, all right, so he gave me Freetie's... To fairy's protection. Yeah, so you're actually just referencing that card about phasing things out to the end of the turn. Um, this is another card from the box. Uh, it's going right now for 28 bucks, up to 30 uh, for the non-shiny version. To fairy's protection is going to be a standard card most people in EDH run. It's super great. Basically, you just don't exist until the beginning of your next turn. It's really good. Anyone wants to board wipe, anyone wants to hurt you or take an infinite amount of turns, whatever, who cares. Until your next turn, you don't exist. the Mystic exist. Archive card you have? Yeah, it's a Mystical Archive version, so it's a reprint of a version that they already have out there. I don't know if this is all of them or not. What else we got? It does Mystic Archive now. All this? Common stuff that we didn't pull. Okay. So this, if you just want to show the thickness is of that. Open? Yeah. Yeah. Open it? Thickness of this. Yeah. So it's just... So this is going to be a good amount of cards. I, I think just at a glance, this is what? 30, 40 cards? Probably. Yeah. Well, between 30 and 40, because some of it's... About a finger thick. Yeah. So stepping away from the Sunshine and Rainbows for a brief moment, that's my chief complaint about this Strixhaven pack. One of the reasons why I'm really underwhelmed with the Strixhaven booster in general like I said, I myself am more of a standard guy. These Mystic Archives are great for everyone else that loves EDH, loves your or Commander. But if you're just interested in standard, now you've got 30 to 40 cards from a box you paid you paid a good amount of money for that you're never going to use. And if you're lucky, you'll resell them. But the like the um, the Demonic Tutor, for example, when the packs first dropped, was in the hundred hundred and twenty dollar range. It's already down to sixty. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know what those prices look at. I'm not a magic investor, so don't take any advice I have as far as magic investing goes. I just think it's a really poor decision on which of the coasts to keep doing what they've been doing because now now you have Mystic Archive you can't use in standard. And in addition to Mystic Archive, just like the Calamax he pulled out, yes, it's a very valuable card, but it's not part of this set. So if it's not part of a set that is now in standard, you're not gonna be able to use it in standard. So you you essentially have potentially two cards per pack you're not going to be able to use in standard, even though you purchased that pack. Most people purchase that you use in standard. Now, other side of the fence, of course, if you're an EDH player, if you play Commander, if you play Modern, if you play Legacy, these are going to be fantastic packs because now you have all these yeah. actually, all these great cards that especially some of these cards are worth your Kozilek, quite a bit. Kozilek, Demonic Tutor, Teferi's Protection. Teferi's Protection, Kroos and Grip. Kroos and Grip. A lot of well, EDH Well, Kroos and Grip's not worth crud anymore, but... 
Those three cards yeah. alone pay for the box. And that's just three cards. I Granted, you can't use them in standard. Mm -hmm. But those three cards are heavily played in Commander. And those three cards alone pay for the value of what you paid for the box, basically. Yeah. So that's not even counting any of the other rares. That's not counting any of the commons, any of that stuff. Um, it is tough to resell stuff. So if you're going to resell it, yeah. But if you if you needed Tefir's Protection, or if you needed mm -hmm. uh, Kozilek, or let's say you need a Demonic Tutor, you can sell your Kozilek and get your Demonic yeah. Tutor from it. So, um, yeah, it's they're really it's, it's it is a double edged sword. I can see that. If you're going to play standard, this may not be the booster box you want to get because it's going to have tons of those in it, and mm -hmm. it's going to have one to two per pack. Um, they are gorgeous, though. A lot of them are really pretty. Um, there's also Japanese versions of them, and I don't know. Most people are getting consensus. The Japanese ones look better. They're way cool. The art's different. Yeah, it's gorgeous as a whole. I think it's better art, but yeah. And if you're looking to get Japanese cards, there's good news and bad news. Good news is you don't have to buy packs from Japan to do it. Yeah, but only Strixhaven's collectors, collectors packs, packs are going to have the Japanese card in it, and the Japanese Mystic Archive. So again, still not going to be usable in standard. Now, with that said, virtually every Japanese Mystic Archive card is going for a good amount of money. Yep. And it's this Wizards of the Coast pulled this same kind of shenanigans back when they did like an anime style Japanese Planeswalker several years ago. It was a really Lilliana. tough blow to the community. A lot of people were really unhappy with their decision to make them Japanese only. But Wizards of the Coast is the company. They are trying greatly to break in the Japanese market, which is controlled by Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon right now. So having these Japanese-only incentives makes sense to them as a company. I don't know. I haven't seen their their... I haven't seen their shareholder reports to see how successful the Planeswalker one was. I don't, I'm interested. I'm interested to see how successful this will be for them as a company. Um, hopefully, this is my hope. This is their second and final attempt to break into the Japanese market, and that if this fails, they'll stop with this kind of shenanigans and they'll give these amazing, um, beautiful works of art in English as well, not just Japanese restrictions. Cultivates on the field right now, or you can see it out of the plane. Yep. That's a green staple card that does, that is in almost every green deck. Search for land, get your land out. Well, thinking of the Michelangelo hand, that's normal cultivate with a. Uh, yeah, it's been reprinted a bunch. Flashy thing. Mm -hmm. um, this one. That's gonna be a staple card. Yeah, everybody's gonna run that um, in the green. These two are the same card, but one is foil, one is not infuriate, um, and the uh, yeah. uh, dress. I have a discard deck, which is, surprisingly <laughs> enough, makes you discard. Very infuriating to play against, um, but when it works, it's really nice. If I turn two or three, they're down to one or two cards, and you're, they are uh, they've discarded everything they started with, except for maybe one or two cards, uh, and you're then able to control the board really well. Negate, another one that uh, it's a been reprinted a bunch. Um, here's Defiant Strike. There's a really interesting new counter spell in Strixhaven that unfortunately you didn't pull, so we weren't able to show it off. But you're going to start seeing anyone that's running blue is going to really enjoy that. Mess with your opponent's graveyard. Really unique counter spell. It's not just a counter spell. Cross and Grips, one of those cards that it was worth a lot. They've reprinted it a ton recently. Yeah. So its value has dropped considerably, but it's still a really good card to have. I've actually never seen this one played in EDH, reading its effect. Um, I think I think it's going I think it's really good potentially in Commander. But again, I've never, I've never seen anyone play it. My biggest thing with it is its overload. You so know Mystics this is called Mystics Mastery. Uh, it's a sorcery that plays for four. Three and, and a red. Um, the nice thing is, I do like if it's going to be a high cost, then at least let me play whatever colors I want. So this one is one red, and the rest of them are colors. Color. Yeah. Um, so you exile a target card that uh, an instant or a sorcery from your own graveyard, and then for each card exiled this way, exile target card. Yeah. Why would you only do it once? You may copy it, and you may cast a copy without paying its mana cost. And an overload, when you cast a spell, um, you change its text 
to replacing instances of target with each. So again, if you're looking at the combination of these mage crafts and these other ones where it allows you to duplicate, so you can in theory do this twice to all the cards in your in your graveyard, um, recast everything in your graveyard. Um, yeah. Pretty insane if you if you I've get seen, that combo rolling. Yeah, I've seen red and blue wizards be a pretty popular archetype in commander. Um, Sterkshaven gave wiz the wizard commander decks a lot of tools in their toolbox. So they did also reprint Blasphemous Act, which is a red board wipe. Um, if you play that card with Blasphemous Act and that card's in your graveyard, you're going to board wipe yourself too. So just heads up. It doesn't say you may do each card. It says you do each card in your graveyard. So that card will hurt you also, but it's also really good. Actually, as you can see with these Mystic Archives cards, they're all very beautiful cards. They definitely handpicked specific artists. Um, we didn't get the ugliest card in Magic history pulled in our Mystic Archive this time. Fortunately. But um, if, 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 any, if any of you are paying attention to the Mystic Archive news and things, you know what I'm talking about. It, it looks like a picture of a guy photoshopped himself in a paid program. It's just the worst part ever. But Wizards loves it. It's, yeah. I don't know why, but they think it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. I think it's, I can't remember. Opt. One with, with my luck, with my luck, it's like a make a wish situation, and I'm just being an asshole now. So who knows? It could be. Or one deny. <laughs> so maybe you can just explain this a little bit better for me. I've seen this several times now. Yeah. <coughs> so it says for each spell and ability your opponent controls, counter it um, unless they pay four. Um, so the only time I've ever seen this played was during a, a Commander podcast, uh, and there had already been like four things in the stack, mm -hmm. and then they plopped this on top of it um, so that all of them had to pay one or... Pay four or counter. Pay four or not do it. Other than that, is there any reason to use this in Standard? So that's not going to be in Standard, I don't believe. It's going to be a Mystic Archive, but yeah. that's absolutely going to be a stack killer. It's designed to play at the end of a stack to really just debilitate because it's spells and abilities so that can be anything from you know i activate this spell well this magecraft goes off and my magecraft goes off i'm going to copy this spell so you copy this spell and cast it again well this magecraft is going to go off it's just going to really accelerate so that stack shares. whirlwind denial as the name implies is a whirlwind of no and for every single every ability and every spell that goes off your opponent has to pay four mana or it doesn't get to go off so as you can imagine, that gets super expensive, super fast. Here it is. Faithless Looting. Faithless Looting. It's hideous. I'm going to slide it under. For all you people. That's what it looks like. That's a real card. It's that a real is, card. That's not a prank. That's not somebody in a paint program. Editing Wizards a card. said that's great. Do it. Make it a thing. And so that's a thing. You can get that card. I've seen so it. So Mystic Archive is supposed to be reflections of art. This is uh, very obviously modern art. Yeah, somebody thinks this is great. Hey, if you like it, comment. Let us know why it's your favorite. If you have one of these, now put it in the comment section. But, now pull up. Uh, now pull up on your phone. Pull up Demonic Tutor for the Japanese one oh, yeah. to show the work of art. The work. <laughs> just, it's just they're just masterpieces. And it's, again, I'm really upset that you can't really get them in America easily. I called every magic shop in town to try and pre-order collectors boxes, and they weren't doing them. Yeah, or they're sold out the second they get one. So like, Electrolyze is, is common. That's been used quite a bit. Growth Spiral. Oh, growth Spiral is really popular. Open Image. Download Image. Okay, growth Spiral is really Harvest. popular. Yeah. Growth Spiral was really popular back when Ravnica was doing its thing. So Adventures um, Impulse... First time I've seen it, but apparently it's a reason. So compare all these Mystic Archive cards to this beautiful masterpiece. This card, by the way, if any of you open up a collector's box and you see something like this in it, um, I think they're going for like six or seven hundred bucks right now. If it's shiny, if it's the shiny one, they're ridiculously they're expensive. They're quite expensive. Do yourself a favor and don't sell it. Um, the Jap on. the Japanese Liliana Planeswalker from several several years ago is in the five thousand range, I believe. Yeah. 
or at least two thousand five hundred. I, I might might be doubling a the cost there, but it's it's, it's worth at least two thousand yeah. dollars. And that's re- that's crazy. If you pull it, proxy it out, put it in a yeah. protective sleeve, keep it safe, and then yep. hold on to it. It'll grow. In, it'll grow in value. If it's that's, that's that's one piece of investment advice I am solidly standing by. Throw that so throw that sucker in a hard shell, especially if it's holographic. Send it out to be graded professionally. Get it in a, get it in a graded sleeve. And then just hold on to it. And then when you graduate college in eight years, you'll have enough to pay for your college. Not really, <laughs> but basically. So Adventures Impulse is a new one uh, to me. Uh, like I said, apparently it's a reprint, but I haven't seen it before. Yeah, I, I like it pretty good with one drop. Put the top three cards of your library and you can reveal a creature or a land and then put it into your hand. Um, so for one drop, pretty good. If, you're, if you get it right off, the bat in your opening hand you can pull land if you've already got plenty of land you can just uh, get the next creature you need so it's a decent card I like the versatility of it village rights on the opposite spect- end of the spectrum I don't think you would ever play I am not a sacrifice creature type player um, there are decks built around that where you sacrifice other creatures and stuff yep. um, this one you have to cast sacrifice a creature for, um, and just to draw two cards. And I just don't ever see the value to that thing. What do you guys think of sacrificing a creature to draw two cards? It depends on what the creature is. If it's a crappy little pest and I'm going to gain life, heck yeah. Let's kill it. Let's gain some life. That's another one of those. If you have that deck, if you're running a green-black deck from that school, for Strixhaven especially, like, yeah, and you get a bunch of pests or some cruddy little inklings you don't care about, why not? But... I agree with you. If it's anything besides like a token, I'm probably not going to want to sacrifice it. Unless it has a sacrifice effect too. So there's lots of things that will trigger from that also. So Village Rites is on the opposite end of the spectrum of that. Village Rites is an absolutely fantastic card. Games are made or braided by draw power. Um, also, it isn't Village Rites is an instant, isn't it? Pull it back up here. Yes. So people say they don't like to sacrifice their cards well your opponent's going to kill your card anyways use an, use an instant speed village rights to sacrifice your card that they've now targeted with with some hate or some destruction Trip and now you get to draw two cards out of it um, village rights is actually a fantastic card from Kaldheim coming into standard though um, Plum the Forbidden is a two cost card that can protect your whole board from a board wipe you're going to take a little bit of health on the end there but you're going to draw cards so instead of your opponent wiping out eight of your tokens, you're going to take eight damage and draw eight cards, which is a great way to recover from a field wipe. Now, Claim the Firstborn um, is... N- I like this one. It's a one cost for red. Uh, there's a lot of them. Treachery, was, I think, was the first one I've ever, I ever saw back in the day uh, where you're getting control. Uh, red has a lot of these. They love taking your creature for one turn. Yeah. But... Combine that with what we were just talking about. You pull pull the guy's creature, attack with them, then sacrifice him with village rights because it's now yours. Uh, so those those type of combinations, I had a deck that did that a lot. Took their creature and then I could sacrifice the creature for something. So that combination is a good combo in my opinion. Um, eliminate decent artwork like that. Yeah. That's a good card. Now, a lot of these Mystic Archives. Veil is another one that old. I just became um, familiar with. Uh, uh, it's only a one drop. Put a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, and then it also gains Hexproof until the end of the turn. Yeah. So I love to have this in my big green decks because and it might just be my personal opinion, but it seems like everybody playing removal decks these days uh, since Kaldheim came out, especially uh, removal has just been insane, uh, and so discard and removal has been huge. So I, I hide this, keep one land life or one of my creatures that I can tap for land, and then they go and take I try to take out my big green creature. Boom, he has hex ploof until the end of the turn. Yep. So they can't touch him, and he gets a plus one plus one on top of that. It's sort of uh, not just you can't touch me, but now I'm even stronger. Yeah. Shock. Everybody loves shock. Everybody knows shock. Two damage. Decent arch. One of the better arch for shock that I've seen. Um, both with research. Uh, agonizing remorse. Um, I actually like the original art better than this one. Uh, the original art for this 
is a real mind. It's, uh, just makes you really think. The little kid, and he's uh, weeping over some. Uh, it looks like someone in his family has died, uh, and because of the name agonizing remorse. Uh, it's obviously something he did to cause it, and it's just it's a really cool, um, one of the more story arc just for writing one little card. But uh, still, it's a decent card. You They reveal, like I said, I have a discard deck, so I use this a lot. Card card reveals their, um, the opponent reveals their hand, and you exile a card from it. Um, it or their graveyard, so it's nice. Um, you do lose a life for it, but typically it's worth it. Um, and then I like this art a lot. Strategic, strategic planning. Very cool art. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom. It's a two drop. Um, when you're looking for that, when you need that card, it's decent. I don't know if I'd run it very often, but I like the art. Alright, what else do we got, gentlemen? Is that going to do it? I think that's pretty much it. Alright, so you can see. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of other. Uh, get rid of Mike and Joe for a second. Whoosh. There was a lot of other stuff here. We did have it. Didn't get a chance to look at every single card. Didn't expect us to. Um, but they went through, picked the ones that, that were most important. Uh, we still have more single art, full arts, lots of them. Full arts, as they were talking about. One per pack, at least. Um, and here's my the guy I like the Dean or something one drop insane menace lifelink and so uh, that's pretty much going to do it for us so if this is something you're interested in I know it's a little later than normal um, for me at least but if this is something you want to see happen more often I, I may not do it but uh Joe and Micah typically will do it um, when they can. Um, at least one of them, if not both of them. So they can bring over their best pulls that they got from their decks. Um, might even be able to twist their arm and, and let them do it live like we did here tonight. Um, and and uh, we can work on, on a couple other things, tweak it up a little bit. Leave comments. Let us know what would have made this better, what would have made it more enjoyable. Was this of use to you? Um, so let us know, let me know uh, if it's something you want to keep, see again. Thank you so much to Micah. Thank you so much to Joe yeah. for taking their time to come Anytime. do this sitting in a hot, sweltering room uh, because we turned the fan off because of the, uh, because of the mic. So um, they put up with a lot, I but I appreciate you very much. Um, Ron is still with us, so thank you, Ron, for hanging out or at least lurking. Uh, I really appreciate it. And... Like, subscribe. Heck yeah. And whatever else you guys do, don't forget to watch us. Uh, watch me on uh, Magic Gathering Arena. Uh, depending on the day, there have been days where I've lost every single duel. Um, but I'm still making my daily daily quests and stuff. Um, and then last week, this week, on Thursday, I won them all. Uh, and I don't think that's ever happened where I've won every single one. So regardless... <laughs> Check them out. See what you think. I do my together. Puzzle Quest, my favorite game. I cannot speak of it enough. I love it so much. And I just changed the way I stream it to where you now see the current deck I'm playing, the current Planeswalker I have on the other side as you see the, the game play out. So check them out. Whatever else you do, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Bye.